good morning in today's class let's study about trigeminal nerve trigeminal nerve is a fifth cranial nerve the tri means three so the trigeminal has got three divisions trigeminal nerve has got three divisions the first one is ophthalmic second one is maxillary and third one is mandibular the trigeminal nerve has got two functional components so what are the two functional components one is motor and the other one is sensory component so where these two functional components are located the functional components are located in the brain stem so this is actually the floor of the fourth ventricle the middle cerebellar peduncle so floor of the fourth ventricle and if deep inside the floor of the fourth ventricle behind the pons at the posterior aspect of the pons we have two functional columns one is the sensory component medial to it we have the motor component there are three parts for the sensory nucleus we have this is the main sensory nucleus superior to the main sensory nucleus we have the mesencephalic nucleus and inferiorly it extends into the brain stem and up to the proximal part of the spinal cord that is the spinal nucleus of trigeminal nerve so these are the three components of the sensory part next coming to the motor it is a single main nucleus of the main motor nucleus so this is the main motor nucleus this is the main sensory nucleus and this is the mesencephalic nucleus and this one is the spinal nucleus of the trigeminal nerve the main part of the trigeminal nerve is made up of this sensory component so the sensory component is going to supply the skin and the glands which are present on the face okay it is going to supply the skin of the face it is going to supply the palate soft palate it is going to supply the hard palate its mucosa and its glands including the palatine tonsils frontal sinus maxillary sinus etc since it is concerned with the sensation of the face this nucleus is called as the general somatic afferent okay the fibers which are present there are general somatic afferent general means general sensation of the face somatic is the body and afferent afferents are fibers which are coming towards the nucleus this main motor nucleus is located only at the level of the pons behind the post uh, the posterior aspect of the pons and this main motor nucleus is going to supply the muscles of mastication muscles of mastication and also it supplies some of the muscles of the face like mylohyoid uh, it will be supplying the anterior belly of digastric anterior belly of digastric and also it supplies tensor palate and tensor tympani tensor palate and tympani so these are the muscles supplied by the main motor nucleus of the trigeminal nerve since it is supplying the muscles which are derived from the branchial arches so these are the muscles which are derived from the mesenchyme of the branchial arches and hence it is termed as special visceral since it is supplying the muscles emerging from the branchial arches it is called special visceral not general it is special visceral and since the fibers will be going away it is a efferent special visceral efferent okay the fibers which are coming from there are special visceral efferent fibers so this is about the functional components of the trigeminal nerve now we'll study the course and relation of the trigeminal nerve after it emerges from the pons so this is the anterior aspect view of the pons the anterior view of the pons the pons is the medulla so the pons on either side it will be ending in middle cerebellar peduncle 
So it's a basilar sulcus and these are the fibers which are going towards the middle cerebellar peduncle. So the trigeminal nerve emerges at the junction between the pons and the middle cerebellar peduncle where the middle cerebellar peduncle is just starting from pons. Okay. So this main nerve is emerging from the pons here and this nerve will have two components the laterally we have the sensory component laterally we have the sensory component and medial to the sensory component we have the motor component medial to the sensory component we have the motor component okay this sensory component will end in a dilated nucleus dilated ganglia called the trigeminal ganglia okay, it will be ending in the dilated trigeminal ganglia motor nerve root will not form will not contribute in the formation of trigeminal ganglia here this ganglia is convex anteriorly and somewhat concave posteriorly if you see this little concave posteriorly and convex anteriorly Okay, and this trigeminal ganglia is located on the petrous part of the temporal bone. The ganglia is located on the petrous part of the temporal bone, on its medial aspect. This is the petrous part of the temporal bone. You can see this is the medial aspect. You can see a small depression here. This is a trigeminal impression. This is a trigeminal impression, impression on the anterior sloping part of the petrous part of the temporal bone. Here I have shown how the ganglia will be located on the petrous part of the temporal bone. This bulged portion represents the ganglia. Okay. Now, this ganglia is in close relation with, there is a sinus which will be here, that is the cavernous sinus. That will be the cavernous sinus. The posteromedial aspect, the posteromedial aspect will form a depressed impression or a bulged portion. This bulged portion of the ganglia will form an impression on the lateral wall of the cavernous sinus. So this bulged portion will form an impression on the lateral wall of the cavernous sinus. Okay. And if you see this ganglia, this ganglia will be completely enclosed by the dural fold, by the dura mater. This ganglia will be completely enclosed inside the dura mater. And this dural recess is called the trigeminal cave. This dural recess around the ganglia is called the trigeminal cave. This is called trigeminal cave. Okay. The three components of the trigeminal nerve will pierce the dura mater on its anterior aspect and it will enter into the respective foramens. So the first nerve which is coming out is the ophthalmic maxillary and this is the mandibular division. Mandibular division. Okay. This ophthalmic nerve further divides into three branches and it will be entering inside a fissure called the superior orbital fissure. This fissure is superior orbital fissure. So it enters inside the superior orbital fissure. Next division is the maxillary. This maxillary nerve will enter inside the next foramen that is the foramen rotundum. Foramen rotundum. The mandibular nerve will enter inside the third foramen that is the foramen ovale. It will be entering inside the foramen ovale. Now we will see the respective foramens in the skull. You can see this is the superior orbital fissure. You can see this is a 
superior orbital fissure through which the ophthalmic division will be entering after dividing into three branches. The next behind that what you are seeing where you can see a orange thread entering is actually the maxillary division. Okay, the maxillary division will be entering through rotundum, foramen rotundum. Then the third division will be entering through this foramen is a oval. The foramen oval that is the mandibular division will be entering here. So, ophthalmic will be entering through superior orbital fissure, maxillary division will be entering through foramen rotundum, and the mandibular division will be entering through the foramen oval. So, this is the introduction about the trigeminal nerve and its main trunk and the formation of trigeminal ganglia. Now, if you see the motor component, this motor component is not relaying in the ganglia but it goes as a separate branch and it will accompany the mandibular nerve and it will be accompanying the mandibular nerve. So, the mandibular nerve is having the motor root. The mandibular nerve is having the motor root. So, this is about the nucleus and the main trunk of the trigeminal nerve. In our consecutive videos, we can see the individual divisions of the in detail about the individual divisions of the trigeminal nerve. Thank you.